Of course, there's two types of voltages. The DC voltage and the AC voltage. Now, if you're measuring voltages, it's important that you know if it's a DC voltage or an AC voltage. I have here a battery. Of course, I know that it has a DC voltage. All batteries are DC. So, if I want to check the voltage of this battery, I just have to place switch my range selector to whatever value. Now, let's have an example. I know that this is a 1.5 volts battery. So, there is a 1.5 volts here. You just have to search. Okay? Then, if I know that it's a 1.5, then it's easy for me to choose which range should I use. So, I can make use of the 2.5, right? Okay. Or I can also make use of the 10 volts. Can I also use the 50 volts? Yes, of course, you may do so. But you have to be precise as possible. So, I could either use 2.5 or 10 volts. Let's for example, I would like to make use of the 2.5 volts. So, I will read on the 250 volts scale. 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. Why is that so? I'm only on, only on the 2.5 volts. It's because it's the only range available. So, if that will be the case, then I just have to adjust and assume that each value would be a 0.5 value. So, this will become 0.5, 1 volt, 1.5 volts, 2 volts, and then you have there 2.5 volts to satisfy my 2.5 voltage. So, in my head, this will become 0.5 volts, 1 volt, 1.5, 2, 2.5 volts. Okay? So, we'll try to know the reading of this voltage of this um battery so you just have to look for the positive value side of the battery aside from this this portion indicates that this is a positive one okay so positive and then the negative so positive and then the negative probe on the other end okay so as you can see the pointer fluctuates to what value so you can see that it points out on this portion okay okay let's try correcting the pointer okay i'm going to place it at the zero that's the purpose of the zero corrector okay to get a precise value again okay so it's it has an exact reading of 1.5 volts here because it's connected here he here because it points out here and that is 1.5 volts okay so let's have an example and make use of 10 volts. Will I get the same value? Of course. I make use of the range selector. So where, where will I read the voltage? I will read the voltage. You try to look if you have there a 10 scale. Okay, so you have there a 10 scale, top, the topmost part here. Okay, you have there 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay. So let's try. Okay. So as you notice, it points out to you will read at this portion. Okay. So this is one volt. A little higher will become one by five volts. Since it's analog, you don't have to perfect the values. You just have to make use of the estimation. More or less. It's exact or exceeds 
the voltage requirement. It's 1.5 volts. You read the value here. Okay, so that is for the AC voltage. Now, let's say, for example, you don't know the voltage of the DC or the device that you're trying to measure or get the DC voltage. So, you could make use of approximation. You could make use of the 50 if you want to be safer to 50 or you want to be on your safest side, then it will be 1,000 DC volts. Okay? We'll try to measure the voltage of a charger. So I have here a charger. This is a laptop charger. We we'll try to plug it to a 220 voltage. And then we'll try to get the voltage value from this. Because this is the output of the charger. Okay. So, I know that this is a DC voltage. Because all chargers have DC volts. So, I will place my range selector to the DC portion. So, I will, so I will choose... 10 volts okay so most probably this will be the negative portion because you have here the black portion most of the time DC voltages have indicators let's say for example for batteries you have the negative and the positive now for chargers like this so the we have here an indicator being represented by the black color. So I will assume that this is my negative voltage, negative volt, negative portion. And then I will try to insert for the positive voltage here. Okay. Take a look at the needle if it fluctuates. Okay, it seems that it has a very high value, higher than the 10 volts. Okay, I assume that it's 10, but it seems that it is higher than 10 volts because it fluctuates more than the scale. So I will move my selector. To 50 volts so I'll try again to measure the DC voltage okay it's a little tight so I'm having a hard time inserting my There it goes. So, as you can see, okay, the needle pointer points somewhere here, okay? So, if it's 50, then I'll read on the range up to 50 values. Where is my 50? So, there is 10, there's 50. So, I'll reach my scale at the 50 values. If, it, if my needle fluctuates somewhere here, so from 10 to 20, this line here would be for 15. 15 units, a little higher, somewhere here. So that is 18. 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 volts. So the output voltage of this charger is 18 volts. DC. Okay, now I'll be measuring AC voltage. From DC, I will switch to AC voltage. Now, what are the sources of an AC voltage? 
So primarily, an AC source has AC voltage. That's the reason why I have an AC source here. A socket. Okay. So, of course, you have to make use of the AC voltage. So again, it is important that you know if it's an AC volt or a DC volt. A direct current or an alternating current. Now, in my case, I know that an AC source has a 220 voltage. So that's the reason why I place my range selector to 250 volts. Now check if your zero corrector is pointed at a zero. Yes, check. Then range selector is 250 because I know that's, that I have, I'll be measuring at 220 volts. Okay, so 250 where am, where am I going to look for the reading? Of course, I have here the range selector 050, 150, 050, 100, 150, 200, to 250. 250, so it satisfies the value. Then I just have to place this inside. Now, an AC voltage has no polarity, which means that I can make, I can switch the test probes. Okay, let's try this first. Okay, so as you can see, the needle fluctuates to this portion, to this portion. So from 200, you will read on this part because your, your range is 250, you read on the 250 range. So you have here the needle pointer pointed to Actually, it's 225 because at, it's after 200 and at the center. 225 is an approximation. You can also say 224, 226. It's, it's up to you. But by estimate, it is 225 voltage. What, if, what is important is that it exceeds the 220 voltage. Okay. So let's try switching. Let's see if AC voltage has a polarity. So I try to switch the test probe. As you can see, it has the same reading, just a little bit lower, more or less. It's still 220. It's, uh, it has no problem. Anyway, it's an alternating current. AC voltage has no polarity because you can get the same value. Okay, so that is how we make our readings. For the current reading, we can make use of the DC milliampere here. So there is another way of measuring the DC current. And that will be demonstrated on my next upcoming videos. So please try to subscribe and watch my next videos so for now that will be my demonstration for the parts and on how to use an analog multi-tester thank you for watching god bless